just bringing them down, 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 yeah We've all been looking for a silver line Something to hold on to and hope's been hiding I know a place you can go if you want to find it And this is the good news If you're breathing, it's for you An empty grave, a life that's changed It all points to Jesus' name If you've been searching And nothing's been working I've got good news Jesus loves you Open up your eyes and look
My heart's forever changed I know the old me is over and buried in the grave I don't care what they say cause I'm never be ashamed of His love that saved me 180, the type that's never faded So now rub your hands If you know him, then go ahead and call up your friends Cause we out here on a Friday where it be And if you owe it on it And this month is a celebration. So let's get right into it. Today, we are making not cake, but drum roll, finger drum roll. <gasps> Gingerbread House making competition day. Woo! And if yeah. you're thinking to yourself, I have seen so many gingerbread house making competitions. It's so lame. Well, it's not. This because one's different. This one has a twist. Two ingredients are gonna be placed in front of us. We're gonna play one round, count them, one round of rock, paper, scissors. Whoever wins that one round gets to pick which supply they're using and the other one goes to the chlisser of the mm. round, okay? Mm. When we're done picking all of our supplies, we will then have three minutes to make a gingerbread house. Here we go! Ah! My goodness! We have graham crackers or cardboard. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Yeah! Oh. I feel like I'm gonna regret this choice. Okay. Joke's on you, I'm gonna make a mansion. Oh, I see. Honestly, I know what I would choose here. Here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! No! Yeah. Give me that tape. This one, I Joke's don't... on you, I got the frosting. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot! Ha ha! I'm gonna do these, because I feel like they'll be easier to stick on than those. Okay, next is oh. a cup. Oh. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Shoot yourself. Woo! Woo! Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Oh! I'm losing! Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Yeah! I'm gonna go with the buttons. Ooh! Legos or mini bears. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! Yeah! I'm taking my bears. Okay, what do we got? We got sprinkles or foil confetti pack. Both Ready? great options. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot! <laughs> yeah! I go with the sprinkles! I'm feeling good about my supplies. How are you feeling? I'm ready. Any more kids, I go. Yes, I go! I'm a little bit worried this tape does not stick on graham crackers. <laughs> We're about to not at all. Not <laughs> even not even the slightest. You want to trade? We're gonna barter because my tape is useless. <gasps> my jacket's on, but now I have glue. I gotta get my jacket off. Let's just get some nice glue on there. I feel like I'm gonna use the entirety of this can by the end of this to make sure this stays together. Give me more gingerbread. Give me more gingerbread. Give me more gingerbread. Am I supposed to put these Legos together? You, you know what? You can use them however you want. What am I supposed to do with these guys? Tape them? You have to use all your supplies. Okay, it's, this house needs residents who live inside. Have you ever eaten your gingerbread house growing up? What? Of course. Really? What? I don't think I've ever eaten my gingerbread house. Of course you haven't. Uh -huh. Okay, make way. Look at my beautiful creation. Can I rotate it? <gasps> Look at it go. Look at it. Dun, 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 what, dun. What, what, are you, what is, no! My door. So I use triangles because 
I, you know, I know an architect. And they talk about the strength of triangles. I don't know how to do a triangle with my... Is that, is that a triangle? That looks... All right, but... yours is good, but I feel like it's what's expected. No, no, the Boring. challenge was to make Mine it look like has... a gingerbread house. Mine does. It has a roof, okay. It has Christmas lights hanging down. It has the, the tenants that live here, as well as this egg. I made a Christmas tree out of Legos. This is my Christmas tree. The Christmas tree is really nice, and I really yeah. enjoy that. But looking at this side of it, mm -hmm. it's predictable. But it's fine, Charles. Uh, yeah, <laughs> triangles win. Okay, I will take the loss. Merry Christmas, everybody. Rejoice in the Lord always. Philippians 4-4, four, four. listen up, don't ignore, recipients, let's roar, rejoice in the Lord, we gotta choose joy every day, but you might say, whoa, does that mean I can't be sad? No way! To rejoice in the Lord means to give praise in the storm, or on a beach where it's warm, whether you're happy or bored, come on, rejoice, we give you our thanks, hands in the air with no money in the banks, we give you our worry, give you our doubt, in every situation we'll praise with a shout, in the sea, in the sky, in the heat of July, I rejoice with a voice or from Maine to Dubai. No, nothing gonna stop me giving him praise. To rejoice is how I live, not a phase. It may be dark, but I, I may be sick, but I might be crying. But I, I was called in name, but I lost something I love, but I didn't get what I wanted, but I left in the cold. This month, we are talking about the celebration of Christmas. That's right, Charles. Our memory verse this month is Philippians 4, 4, which says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice! There is so much to celebrate when we learn the true meaning of Christmas, who Jesus is, and how much he loves us. That's right. We celebrate during Christmas because Jesus came to earth as a tiny baby. He lived and walked on earth, performed miracles, loved everyone, and died and rose again so that we can live forever with him in heaven. Jesus loves us so much. The promise of Christmas began way before Jesus was born. The Old Testament tells us that many people prophesied or predicted about the coming Messiah. God made a promise that a savior was coming long before he ever did. That's right. And everything people said would happen did in the birth of Jesus, bringing hope and joy to the world. Let's check out today's lesson. When you think about who God is, what comes to your mind? What do you picture? Is, is God some old man with, with a gray beard and a walking shtick? Is he maybe like sitting on a soft, cushiony cloud far up in the sky somewhere, but, but barely involved in your life? When you think of God, do you think that he's a loving God? Do you view him as a God who is creator and in control of everything? This week, we're starting a new series called Star of Bethlehem. We're going to look at who God really is. And today we're going to see that God is for you. He's right there with you, no matter where you are. So let's go to this week's episode of Star of Bethlehem. Welcome to Bethlehem, Texas. You've come at the right time. In fact, it's the most exciting time of the year here in Bethlehem. That's because it's almost Christmas. You probably noticed we share our name with the place where Christmas began. Every year, people come from miles around to hear us tell the story of that other Bethlehem, the more famous Bethlehem. And every year, it goes off without a hitch, except for that year. 
the year of what some still call the great Christmas disaster. The year it seemed our story, the great story of that very first Christmas, might not get told at all. And what happened? And now I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Why don't I start where all the best stories do? At the beginning. Attention, everyone! Are these the Christmas decorations you wanted, Miss Frost? John Jr., stop chasing Ashley! You are a chicken! Find your nest and sit! Uh, Ashley, darling, fix your halo. Mary, where's my Mary? Great, we've lost our Mary. Joseph, anyone seen Joseph? Ah, good, Gabe is here. We have our Joseph. Everybody, get where you can see me and hear me. Uh, Olivia, would you be a dear? Go find Noel. Tell her to hurry up. We can't start without our Mary. Sure, Miss Frost. Mm. Ashley, darling, let me help you. Oh, I didn't see you, sorry. Great. I made one mistake. Now I get to spend my Christmas break doing community service as a junior assistant. I mean, who wants to be a glorified gopher? I mean, sure, it was a big mistake. But still. Noelle, we're getting ready to start. Noelle? <laughs> okay. Cow, sheep. Now. Your part is just as important as any other part. So I want you to really feel it. Be the cow. Be the sheep. Yeah. Be the cow. Be the sheep. Your attention, please. This is our final dress rehearsal. That means this is our last chance to get it right before our big opening tomorrow night. Ugh, stop it, Brody. Brody? That will be enough. Well, are you in here? Noel? So, are you ready to give it your all? Yes, yes Mrs. Frost. Brody? Yes, Miss Frost. Okay. Everyone in their places? Let the dress rehearsal begin. Are you ready? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, listen, Gabe, I know you have a lot on your mind with the play, but I was wondering if you could keep an eye out for me backstage. Thank you, Gabe. You are such a steady, dependable boy. <laughs> Mr. Nickel, our storyteller. Mrs. Frost. <laughs> Looks like you have a great cast of kids this year. Oh, we do. We really do. Especially our Mary. Noelle Green is playing her this year, and she really is perfect for it. You're going to love her. Well, you know how to pick them. Guess I better get to my spot. Mm. Aha, there you are. Is Noelle ready? Uh, about that. Um, Noelle isn't here. Well, of course she's here. She's our Mary. I looked everywhere, Miss Frost. I'm telling you, she's not here. Oh, it's Noelle. Hello, Noelle, honey, where are you? Oh, hello, Mrs. Green. Uh, uh, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Are you sure? Y you know, sometimes these things pass quickly. The flu. Yes, I've heard that's going around. Uh, well, you tell Noelle that we'll be praying she gets well. Oh, no, don't you worry. We'll be just fine here. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Green. So, Noelle has the flu. Isn't there some kind of, I don't know, backup plan? Do her understudy, Jenna, who also has the flu. This can't be happening. Olivia, dear, you could play Mary. Hey, I know. 
Let's look at the cast list. There's probably a, an angel or a sheep who could fill in. The others already have their parts. Olivia, please, it has to be you. It can't be me. I've messed up. I figure God's gotta be pretty mad at me right now. So I can't play the mother of God's son. You'll be fine. And we'll have to do something about that hair though. But to do my community service, I'm supposed to be your junior assistant. Olivia, the best way that you can assist me right now is by playing the part of Mary. Without her, we don't have a show. Will you do it? Hey. You should leave people alone. Lighten up. Just having fun. Well, knock it off. Why? Because she's the star? Oh, wait. I'm the star. You hear that, everyone? I'm the star. Get on my way, Shepard. Quiet, Brody. We're about to start. So, you're playing Mary now? Yeah. I know. Bad idea, right? Doesn't seem like such a bad idea to me. You're gonna do fine. I hope you're right. Okay, God. I know we don't talk much, but I just wanna say, <laughs> I don't know how, this happened. I mean, every little girl in this town grows up hoping to play Mary. I'm such a mess right now. I... So out of everyone, I don't know how it ended up being me. And well, I'm sorry about that. But I'll try really hard to get this right. How am I going to do this? I could single-handedly ruin this entire town's Christmas tradition. God, please help me. <laughs> nice, Olivia. Asking God for help? Like he's even going to hear you. Is everyone in their places? Okay. Let the dress rehearsal begin. Storyteller, take it away. Welcome to Bethlehem, Texas. Folks around here call me the storyteller. And there's one story I like to tell more than any other. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking our story begins long ago in that town that shares our name. You're thinking of that famous starry night in that more famous Bethlehem. And sure, I understand why you would think that. But if you'll lean in a little, I'll tell you a big secret. Our story really begins long before that. Our story begins at the beginning, at the very beginning of history. You see, God always had a plan to fix our broken relationship with Him. And He didn't keep His plan a secret either. He talked about it from the very beginning. You ought to read the whole thing. It's all really good. But for now, we'll just pick it up. Oh. Ah, right about here. Long ago, in a town called Nazareth, there lived a girl named Mary. Mary was happy when she was finally old enough to get married. She became engaged to a man named Joseph. One day, an angel appeared and told Mary she was one of God's favorite people. The angel said God had chosen Mary to have a very special baby. The baby would be God's son. Me? God's favorite? That's not possible. This is a big mistake. At first, Mary didn't understand how this could possibly happen since she was not even married yet. She wondered how God could trust her with such an important role. The angel told Mary that God chose her because she had found great favor with God. 
God was for her and would help her live out his great plan. Mary took all of this in and treasured it in her heart. Wait, Mary was a part of God's plan? So he went and asked her to do something this important to be the mother of God's son, just to watch her fail, right? God didn't pick Mary to make a fool of her. God was for her. He chose her because he loved her faults, mistakes, and all. He wanted her to succeed. He was cheering for her, and all of this was for her. God did all this for her, for me. God is for me, not against me. So Mary knew that God was for her, and even though it might be hard sometimes, God would be with her, helping her always. So Mary responded with her whole heart. Lord, I'm yours. I know you're with me and for me. Let everything you said about me come true. All of this was very strange to Joseph. <laughs> you ready? Sure, I'm ready. God did all this for her, for me. God is for me, not against me. So, if God was cheering for Mary, does that mean he's cheering for me too? Come on, you have a part to play. We saw today that Olivia couldn't believe that she was given the lead role in the play. After all, she was only there because she got into trouble and helping out with this play was actually part of her community service. See, Olivia thought that she was a mess up and figured that because of that, God was mad at her too. And, and that God was mad at everything that she had done. So why would God allow her to take over the lead role in this play, which happened to be Mary, the mother of Jesus? She just couldn't understand why. But through playing Mary, she realized that no matter what she did, God was for her. He was on her side and he loved her no matter what. And I don't know about you guys, but that was huge for me. There was actually a time in my life a while back where I was a little bit of a troublemaker. And now I know some of you are like, no way, Nick, you, you seem like some sort of angel and I can see that halo over your head. But the reality was, I was constantly doing the wrong things and making terrible decisions. And I remember thinking that God must be so angry with me and the decisions that I'm making, that he was probably fed up with me. I remember thinking to myself, God probably has had enough and he's just gonna give up on me. And that was a really scary thought for me because I thought at the time that I would have to go through this life all by myself on my own because God was just simply too mad at me and didn't want anything to do with me. But then I read this verse that changed everything for me. It says in Numbers 14, 18, the Lord is slow to anger and filled with unfailing love, forgiving every kind of sin and rebellion. You see guys, God isn't some angry, wrathful God who's just waiting for you to mess up and looking down at you and going, striking you with lightning just because you made a mistake. He's slow to anger. He's filled with love. God is on your side. He's cheering for you to get things right in your life because he wants what's absolutely best for you. And when you make mistakes or you mess up or you make bad choices, it's so easy to think that God is gonna be mad at you and disappointed with you. Now, if you find yourself thinking that about God, here's what I want you to do instead. Picture him with love saying to you, cheering you on, saying, I want you to get that right because I love you and I'm for you and I have awesome things in store for you. So come on, let's get this. That's the way God is. He just wants us to get these things right because simply it's better for you. So whether you've lied to someone or talked behind someone's back or cheated on a test, whatever that may look like in your life, know that God is for you and he wants you to get it right because it's better for you. You'll see things happen the way God intended when you start to get those things right.
Look at what it also says in Romans 8, 31 and 32. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? I pray that you will get this and that you'll know this, that God is on your side and God is for you and God loves you and desires for you to live the life that he intended for you to live because that life is a life better than any we could try to live out on our own. So join up with God and let him lead you and guide you to live out the life that he intended for you. Just like how God kept his promise to send a savior all those years ago, we can trust that he will keep his promises to us too. Let's hold on to that hope and celebrate this Christmas season. Remember to rejoice in the Lord always, no matter what we may face, because we have the promise of God's love and salvation in Jesus. Mm -hmm. We will see you again next week, but don't forget, it's a great day to be a church kid! Yeah! It's Christmas time! Church kids, in case you didn't know, we wanted to tell you that Jesus loves you. Yes, you. And he loves you so much that he died on the cross for your sins so that we could have salvation, which means we are in right standing with God. When we ask Jesus into our heart to be the leader and Lord of our life, we no longer have to walk in fear or in shame because when God sees us, he sees the righteousness of his son, Jesus. Salvation is a free gift to anyone who says yes to Jesus. In fact, in Romans 10, 9, it says this, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if today you want to make the decision to make Jesus the leader and Lord of your life, now is your moment. Are you ready? As a sign of support, let's all pray this together. Lord Jesus, Welcome to my world. I ask you to come into my heart and to forgive me of all of my sins. I decide today to follow you and to make you the leader and Lord of my life. I believe it, I receive it, and I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we are so excited for you. Make sure to tell a church kids leader so we can celebrate with you and give you next steps.